Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I am down in Rodney, Ontario at the Tar Spot Nursery. This is where Albert Tenuta works, Omafra's plant pathologist. And we're going to talk about today fungicide application to control tar spot. When's the best timing? What's the best return on investment on a particular timing? Let's talk to Albert Tenuta. So we're going to look at four different plots here. We're going to look at tar spot development and control on a more tolerant hybrid. And you'll notice tar spot being here. It's significantly less than what we see on our susceptible hybrid. And we're going to look at how fungicide application, different timings impact tar spot management. So here we are, this is our fungicide check. We see the tar spot is basically from the bottom leaves all the way up to the top. This is our standard. And we could say that we are looking at 20, 25% tar spot in this particular plot. So now we've moved over to the pre-tassel fungicide application timing. So a lot of questions around that eight to 10 leaf stage or so. And we can see here that we've got tar spot, we've got tar spot down low, we've got it moving up the canopy as well. Maybe slightly less tar spot than we saw in our untreated check, but again, there's quite a bit of tar spot here, um, and I don't think we'll see a big difference in terms of yield. Now, we're at different plot, same fungicide though, different timing. This is our more traditional VTR1 fungicide application timing. It's been the most consistent we've seen for tar spot, for gibberell ear rot, and other foliar leaf diseases. We can see less tar spot here. We see northern corn leaf blight that came in later in here as well as we saw in others. But again, we see less tar spot here. It's the fungicide is working. This is one of our more effective fungicides. It's doing its thing. So we can see a mark, remarkable difference from those pre-tassel to untreated check to that BTR1. So final stop on our tour today is double application here. So we did a VTR1 application, followed that three weeks later around that R3 hybrid or, or growth stage here. Again, same fungicide, effective fungicide against tar spot. And we can see out of the four plots, this one has the least amount of visible tar spot, not only down low, but above as well. So we've got that extension of the window where we've got a longer window of control for tar spot, the question becomes, although we see less tar spot here than compared to some of the other ones, does it pay to have this fungicide double application? Does it pay? We haven't taken the yield yet. We will be taking yield here. We'll be taking yield from other trials, similar ones with my tar spot colleagues in Wisconsin, Indiana, and Michigan as well to help us answer that question. Because remember, ultimately it's that return on investment. How, does it pay? Do you get the biggest bang for your buck with one fungicide application at that VTR1? Remember, it's critically important for Ontario because of gibberella and that risk. So if you're considering a fungicide application for tar spot, that VTR1 has been our most consistent. We may see an uh, uh, increased level of control potentially with these later applications. Does it pay? Ultimately, the question becomes, if we have a great product, we can have a great fungicide, but if we don't get it there when it's needed, are you gonna see that return? <laughs>